Hello and welcome back to Zero to Game Dev Hero. Today we will learn how to create our own components in Unity with the help of C Sharp. Last time we made this little scene, but it is not very interactive. In the next few videos we are going to change that. Every component is basically a C Sharp script in Unity. So if you want to create a component, you have to create a C Sharp script. There are two ways to create a new C Sharp script in Unity. Either you go to your project folder, right click, then on create and then on C Sharp script. Or you go directly to one of your objects, the one you want the component to be attached to and click on add component. Here you either can search for components or create new ones. So type in my first component, for example, and you will see that it does not exist in our project. So we can click new script. Unity then will ask us to give it a name. The name that we have searched for is automatically filled into this field. It is important that the name has no spaces because this will also be your class name. Click on create and add. This will create our script in our project folder down here. Double click it and after a few seconds Visual Studio will open. So here we are in our first own component. There is already a bit going on here. Unity has created some boilerplate for us. So let's go through all of this. At the top we see our using statement so that the component knows which libraries to use. Unity includes a few by default so that you can use most of Unity's functions directly. Then we have our class. Like I said before, almost every C Sharp script is a class. And here in Unity, every component is a class. A mono behavior class. Here is something new. After our class name, there is a colon and the word mono behavior. This does mean that our class is a mono behavior. A mono behavior is a Unity class that has some functionality and tells our class that it is a component. Because of this, we can attach our class to our game objects in the editor, like we did, and a few things more. We need that mono behavior here, but we don't need to understand it at the moment. Our class or component will be created as the child class of mono behavior automatically. We will learn about child classes later in the series. Mono behavior has a few pre made methods already. Two of them are start and update. Those are so called lifecycle methods. Here in Unity, we don't have to call our main method like in plain C Sharp. Unity does all of that for us. So for every game object in our scene, Unity goes into this game object's components and there it calls those lifecycle methods by itself at the right time. So we don't need to care about calling those methods. Unity will do it for us. But we need to understand when the methods are called. Start is always called once in the beginning. So when the game starts or the game object appears in the game, the first thing Unity does is to run the start on all of its components. Well, there are a few lifecycle methods that are called before start, but we will learn about them later in the series. After the start, the update will be called. Update is called every frame of your game, so it will be called very, very often, many times in a second. Frames do not always have the same length, because every computer has different hardware and therefore some computers are faster and some slower. But you need to know that as long as the object is in the world, the update of this object components will be called every frame. Now let's try out our start and our update. Let's display a text in Unity's console when start is called and when update is called. Then you can see better how they work. Here in Unity we do not use console write line to display something. 
but we use debug log. It works almost the same. So here we can write debug log. This is our start method. Don't forget to save with command S or control S on Windows. And now let's go to our Unity window. Wait for it to reload. Sometimes it needs some time. And click here on the console to see our console. And now press play. There you can see your message. It's called only one time. When we press play, the game objects enter the game world and therefore start is called. Now let's go back to our editor and test the update method. We can write a message here as well. Debug log. This is the update method. Now save and go back to Unity. Here you can press play. And now you can see that the message is displayed very, very often. And if you go back to the top of the console, oh, it takes a while. You can see that before the first update, the start was called here. In the update method, we can do things that we need to be done often, like physics calculation and movement. The start is mostly used to set up the component. We can click pause. We can clear our console and we can do it another time so you can see it again. Here you can see the messages are going up and yeah, now they're over 999 and are not shown anymore here, but uh, they're still shown here in the console. You can see the time when they were printed and the message. I think that's enough for this video. Our first component is not really doing anything, but we have learned how a C-sharp component works. In the next video, we will give our components some functionality and move our game object with code. I hope you liked this video. If you have any feedback or questions, leave a comment. If you like my content, you can support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.